Hello, who have just joined? Welcome. We will be walking around the area. Oh, hi, Sityam. Hi, Christine. Uh, you are my uh, friends and followers who are coming to my tours quite often. Please let me know. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Uh, is everything okay with the sound? I'm beginning the tours 15 minutes before the official start just to make sure that uh, you can hear me okay i will flip the camera hi everyone please let me know is there the sound can you hear me this is the mic and uh, sometimes this prism program uh, doesn't love my mics so let's check this one all good thank you <laughs> so this was the reason why i am here 15 minutes before <laughs> before the tour hi christine hi everyone so we are going to explore a lot of things today but i will uh, i will not show you anything before the tour starts and i will just walk around the area this is the kind of small uh small quarter or lesser town and we are on the governmental quarter it's area of senate as you can see here czech senate uh, and uh, there is a lot of um, security because they open close it it's a public place kind of this garden is a public place during the uh, summer period of time but uh, um because this is Czech Parliament, they have a lot of security service um, measures here. And uh, I will be showing you today a lot of interesting things. So it's not the tour, it's just my walking and talking. I'll show you myself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, there are a lot of beautiful parks uh, in the city center. And it's interesting about Prague that they are hidden. Quite often they are hidden and you have to know this... Um, Kind of secret entrances because you you really can't imagine usually you you can see the park like you can see the park because it is obvious i'm checking the mic <laughs> uh, you see there is the green light and it's supposed to be working so what happens sometimes that the mic is not fully charged or like something happens uh, and it just turns off and that is why there was no sound like that happened on previous tours so I decided to come earlier for two reasons because more people join I have 10 minutes before the tour and uh, the, my subscribers see the notification uh, like there is the bell and uh, you see it when I am here and the second reason is that that sound issues that I used to have but all is good now like the mic is working and hopefully it's okay so I will continue about the I am walking around the Senate. I will be back because we are uh, beginning the tour in the, in the Senate itself, in the territory of the Parliament. But uh, if you don't know in Prague the entrances, you will never find the secret places. For example, I was never showing you this place. Let me show it to you. Oh, my <laughs> one of uh, the most uh, beautiful. Uh, hi, Traveler AI. Hi. It's sunny in New York. Great. And I have a beautiful Czech train. It's not sunny here today. It was sunny yesterday. Today we have quite a gloomy weather and uh, they tell us that um, they are going like it's going to be very rainy and cloudy starting from Monday. So uh, this is one of the secrets garden that I was never taking it to. It's called uh, Garden Below the Castle, uh, and uh, it's uh, very beautiful. But you have to be in a very good athletic form because it's really built as a stepped um, kind of not pyramid but a stepped garden, and you have to climb up uh, it was designed i think for the um, nobility because they wanted them to go down but because it is called kind of the castle the garden below the castle it's really uh, situated below but you have now 
they make tourists to go up the hill <laughs> to train them. It's not the area that we are going to discover today, but to entertain you 10 minutes before the tour, I want to show you something, something really interesting. Probably I will take you on the special tour there um, someday. I, um, it's not convenient because I'm scheduling the tours usually in the evening time, so more uh, people could join me, but it's closed. Oh, no, no, now it's open, but I know that it's six, it's closed, it's supposed to be closed, so, uh, and uh, it's not, it's beautiful in, in autumn and in summer, so nothing, now it's just the beginning. Ah, now it's, no, I was right, you know, guys, uh, 5.30, they closed it, so now it's not working, yes, but I will come here and you will see it. Hi everyone, this is me. Uh, we are going to discover today Wallenstein Castle, Wallenstein Palace, Vajan, Vajan Garden, uh, a lot of peacocks and uh, ooh, huge dragonfly <laughs> and, uh, and ping man probably we will finish there. Uh, but I have never been, no I've been here once when I came there was the free entrance for the Ukrainians. Uh, so it's a beautiful Baroque garden. The entrance fee is uh, 200 crowns. Let me tell you, it's about $10. Uh, so I don't know, is it, is it expensive or not? I think for a garden, it's, um, it's the price. So let me show how it looks like. So I'm entertaining you before the Wallenstein Palace. You can see this um, staircase, the huge chestnut tree blooming in its glory and it reminds me about Kyiv. The chestnuts are just starting to bloom in Ukrainian capital and in Prague the spring this year is kind of, is kind of early. It's, this is the early spring because last year we had the same situation like a week, uh, a week later now magnolia stopped blooming and the um, plum trees apple trees cherry trees are blossoming but this is actually the end of almond blossoming and magnolia blossoming i will try to enlarge this interesting gardens for you please let me know what you think i have seen that from above uh there are the people make the beautiful pictures from above huh? do you want to go inside i don't know oh it's open like but uh, I think it's <laughs> pretty architecture, yes. So it's supposed to be for money, but you know, there is no one asking for tickets. So we just <laughs> came inside. Aha, uh -huh, I see the box office is closed. The box office is closed. Okay. No one is here, so kind of free entrance for those who wants to visit it. I don't know. <laughs> Six p.m. The it's um, it's written at the entrance that the garden is supposed to be closed at five thirty p.m. I see people above. I don't know. Probably these are the last visitors. There are a lot of staircases. Look at this beauty. It's amazing how beautiful it is. I know that sometimes, uh, probably once or twice a year, they have a special light show in this garden when they decorate everything with the beautiful lights. And then you can see um, the staircases and these beautiful things shining. Probably these are the last visitors. They just go down. I will go up a little bit.
So on the way up, I don't know will I climb or not because it's really challenging. You have these observation platforms with some kind of tops and these are the pretty lanterns. Look at this magnificent view of rock. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The gardens below the castle. <laughs> that is surprisingly like something new because I was never that's a lot of stairs and I wasn't supposed to begin <laughs> the tour here. Uh, you see I just pushed the door and uh, it's kind of all this magic is happening. I love when <laughs> the magic is happening on my tours. These are the unexpected things which I am very grateful the destiny for because when you are starting the live tour Hello everyone, we are on an unexpected treat, the gardens below the castle and uh, I'm saying hello to everyone who joined me now. This is the official start, will be in a couple of minutes. I've done that for you. Look, <laughs> look, it's something incredible. We are on the very top. It's an adventure because frescoes and it's even higher. Oh no. <laughs> yes, I will go down probably with you. So the garden is closed. I will show you this uh, observation platform and and there is even one more. I should start running. Uh, in the mornings, not to, like next time, not to breathe in my mic. You see, this will be like it's even higher with the tower and more staircases. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Getting your exercise today for sure. <laughs> yes, exercise. And it's so magnificently beautiful. It's just incredible. Uh, you see there? I don't know why they don't fix that because the place is very beautiful and if they put if they could put like a little bit of effort it would look it would have looked much better with the decorations I don't know with the refurbishment with a little bit of paint and uh, taking care of so let me show you again where we are walking to <laughs> Something new, guys. Today you are in for a treat. Uh, my plan for today is to show you the most beautiful blossoming spots in the be in beautiful Prague. So we are going to see the Wallenstein Palace, Vajane Garden, and the garden around the Senate or Czech Parliament. Uh, and this was a surprise tour of the garden. Hi, Ashrith. Good evening. Good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome. The tour is tip supported. If you are enjoying my stories and the things that I am showing to you, there is the link. There is the link uh, in the description of this tour. Buy me a coffee link, PayPal link and you can tip me and I will be very, very grateful. So we are going out of this. Oh, this is some, something. No, this is the exit, really. Let's look again where we were. I didn't reach that top. You see the, the black uh, tower. Uh, but uh, hi, Carla. Hi, everyone but i have taken you very close like to the last level just before that black tower these were the gardens below the prague castle they were built just for the leisure of the royals and the nobility it's amazing that <laughs> it was a free tour for us this the cash desk it is closed <laughs> so unexpectedly beautiful place 
just in the city center and as I told you you need to know their addresses and to find them that is the stepped architecture how beautiful it is let's go here we are the photographers are out and we are heading to Czech Senate to Wallenstein Palace so this is an adventure <laughs> hi Claire <laughs> hi Claire thank you for joining this tour we had like a small uh, tour before the actual tour so hello everyone hello adventures uh, the um, nature lovers the lovers of my story and today i'm going to show you the spring paradise in prague as i already told you, uh, this year prague just shook off uh, the winter clothes quite early and uh, all this blossoming happened just like this <laughs> in a second in a second just prague became the blooming paradise uh, and uh, I have shown you almond gardens, we have discovered magnolia gardens and today we are going actually to discover the same uh, places but with some other, other peacocks, other flowers and other stories. Uh, hi Julia, hello everyone and we are, we are actually, we have begun 15 minutes ago but uh, this is a beautiful incredible place that and let me show you the courtyard. We are going to Parliament now. It's kind of the hidden treasure. This garden was the hidden treasure and uh, this enchanting sports um, are always like a revelation. So especially during the blossoming season or the um, uh, autumn season when the leaves become uh, red, bright red and brown, uh, you feel like you discovered a jewel and uh, Prague, sometimes when you are walking into like in this um, different streets and cobblestone streets, uh, you don't know that these Asian streets sometimes they hide, they have these treasures, these beautiful gardens. So, the flowers are everywhere in Prague, but they are hidden. And um, every corner is alive with beer or with fragments. So you can see the security, it means, and you can see the Czech flag and uh, Ukrainian flag. So on the governmental buildings in Czech Republic, there are Czech flags and Ukrainian flags always. Uh, that is the support of, like, this is the, the sign of support of the government to my country. And uh, as you know, this initiative of Czech president that he collected somehow money, funds, and found the um, opportunity to deliver about one million shells for Ukraine to fight the war because the situation is very difficult. Look at these mighty wooden doors. These doors, they really copy the doors on the entrance to the, if you remember the entrance to the uh, city hall, old city hall, so the same lines, but uh, those doors belong to the 17th century and this probably younger, but this is kind of the governmental, um, entrance and that is Ukrainian flag <laughs> hi everyone so welcome to the tour today we are discovering blooming Prague and the tour will, will be filled with a lot of history with a lot of uh, flowers and uh, I hope that I will fill you with um, the positive emotions it's sun Sunday today the next working week is beginning tomorrow so I'm wishing you to uh, to fill yourself with them um, with the positive emotions for the next week let's go we are studying and I'm diving into the Parliament uh, this is um, palace and I will tell you the unique history of this place uh, can you imagine that your friend 
is a king like and you want uh, to have a house uh, to build a house close to the place where the king lives but uh, you don't want uh, the king to be jealous so what do you do uh, this is the story of Albrecht Wallenstein. So he was a very important general uh, in the 17th century. There was the battles, the war, it is called the Thirty Years' War, and it was lost by Protestants because the war was between the Protestants and the Catholics. And the main general who was responsible for this um, kind of defeat, defeat of, of Protestants was Albrecht uh, von Wallenstein. This is his monument. You can see another courtyard. I don't know if it's... No? I, 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 okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are not here. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's supposed like I can walk. <laughs> Invitation, no? <laughs> Okay, so the uh, just the security told me that I am not supposed to come close to uh, the man of Albrecht de Wallenstein because that is the entrance to them, uh, actually the place where the government works. Uh, and this guy who was standing over there, you you probably spotted his monument. So he wanted the the emperor Ferdinand II was his name to make jealous that is why he bought a piece of land here which was just the city center and he demolished everything one brick factory 23 houses a palace probably a church I don't remember so he demolished everything and built this lavish house not the house Palace, because this is called the Palace of Albrecht de Wallenstein. What, what is, what's the difference? Like, I, as I understand, palace doesn't have the moat and fortification system as a fortress, and fortress has it. So this is a palace. It's an interesting story. Where we are walking, you can see a lot of uh, um, kind of uh, corridors, and uh, you will see this uh, artificial. I will uh, tell you later about it. So you can see this artificial black stone. This is the feature of this architecture, and this is the feature of that building. So he demolished everything and and established here his palace. Uh, it has the inner garden, quite big, uh, 14,000 square meters. Uh, these black things, they have the special meaning because we are going to see the wall which he created. It looks like the cave, artificial wall. And he kind of ordered to connect everything. Uh, yes, you're right. I see that in the, in the chat you are writing about the security service, like security measures, and uh, like we are in this kind of political center of, uh, of the country. Uh, so what is interesting about this Albrecht von, von Wallenstein? He was the most important figure of his era uh, of um, like 16 hundreds uh, because he came from the very poor family and he decided to make his own uh, kind of destiny life but he was shameless uh, of um, like in in his uh, in the ways how he uh, what he was doing and he uh, he um, he wanted fame he wanted a lot of money um, and he became the commandant like the the, uh, the main the general of them army of Bohemia and he had a lot of titles like the prince and duke and he became rich uh, because the Protestants they got um, uh, like uh, they were killed 28 noble Protestants they were killed and the place that I am showing to you now I was telling you about this 23 houses uh, palace and the brick factory everything belonged to those Protestants so they were killed and uh, this Albrecht von Wallenstein um, confiscated the place for himself for like uh, for nothing I would say uh, and in 
1623, uh, the construction of the palace began. Uh, now I want to take you to Sala Terena. So I'll show you now Sala Terena. This is behind me. It's an interesting uh, place. You can see it in Italy sometimes. So officially, Sala Terena is um, translated like the first floor or like... So something connected to the first floor hall. So this is the correct translation, first floor hall. And it's half of the garden, half of the palace, half of the garden, half of the building. It was used by Albrecht von Wallenstein for beautiful um, balls, parties, uh, concerts. Now it is also used for concerts because every week uh, there is a special schedule. I think it is Saturday uh, night or Friday night. They have concerts here. That is why behind me you can see this uh, benchers. People are sitting here. This is the place for them. Uh, orchestra. And the amazing place because can you imagine that these frescoes survived since the uh, since the 17th century and everything is intact of course they uh, like refreshed them and painted them uh, like uh, they used another layer of color but still it is amazing that this uh, truly magnificent garden survived with all these frescoes in Sala Terena is uh, 30 meters high and it's kind of sinking into the palace complex uh, you might ask me what uh, like about these pictures so they all depict uh, Greek mythology and especially Trojan wars um, so it's first floor hall which is 30 meters high it's very long and mm, it's similar to the Italian garden uh, with uh, a lot of um, kind of shrubs uh, bushes and uh, they are very they kind of they're uh, planted in the strict geometrical form. I will show you now the whole perspective of the garden. You can see this uh, maze of houses, um, maze of shrubs. And uh, as I remember, they wanted even to uh, film, like to shoot this movie about perfumer. You remember where he, uh, he like the guy in France, he was making the perfume and then he was uh, chasing his victims in the maze. So at the end, they picked up the Italian uh, garden, but this, uh, this was also in the list. Uh, I will walk slowly along the Sala Terena to show you the frescoes and um, probably I will just uh, try to enlarge them because they are amazing joining from sunny Florida <laughs> I'm, I'm reading your uh, uh, your comments so these are the heroes of Trojan war and these motifs they are not um, kind of occasional they are not accident accidental because this Wallenstein was a successful military leader and he ordered to uh, decorate his palace in the style of the ancient war and this uh, corner was very important for him because it's really reflected his desire to uh, to show that he is a very important historical figure and uh, these are uh, statues and vases and um, everything that you see all uh, like all around you they um, they were in a very whimsical way connected uh, so the whole uh, place is dominated by this sala terena but i wanted to them the meaning that this Albrecht von Wallenstein wanted to put into everything so he wanted to i would say counterpart or like uh, to show the difference, the striking difference between the civilization, like this is, this Sala Terena represents civilization, and um, untamed nature. So now I'm taking you to the artificial game and I'm going to show you the untamed nature. Uh, that was the place uh, that he created for his aviary. So he liked peacocks, a lot of birds, and the place where he would drink like his drinks <laughs> uh, but uh, it's amazing that this place is 
absolutely free. The statues, the park, the fountains, uh, everything is just open for the people and you don't have to pay anything for that because it's really the, uh, the um, uh, I would say this is the first uh, Baroque Renaissance palace in them. Um, in Prague and it has this very important historical and also uh, historical significance and cultural significance as well. Hi everyone, thank you for joining, even more people are here with me. Thank you for um, coming to my tours and please subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed yet because it is very important. You will get notifications and you will see me more. Peacocks love seeing them last tour, so cute. So this garden is famous for the white peacocks. Now I don't see them. I will take you to the garden which is full of peacocks but at the end a little bit later. So let's uh, uh, look again at this Sala Terena because it is magnificent. It's so huge that you cannot uh, really um, kind of understand that it is so big when you are standing inside it. Uh, so I'm taking you to the grotto, to the wall, to the cave and uh, now I want to show you that amazing Sala Terena again. Albrecht von von Wallenstein didn't live here for a long period of time, just a few years. So as I told you, he began building it in uh, 1623, finished in 1613, seven years and just lived a couple of years because he was um, sick with syphilis uh, and that was very um, unpleasant disease back then and it influenced his cognitive abilities. So Ferdinand II, who lived over there just behind the chestnut tree, I will show you the Prague castle, it is behind this complex but on the top of the hill. And um, people are saying that um, Ferdinand II, the emperor, was jealous of Albrecht von Wallenstein. He, this is the uh, historically proven fact, he ordered to kill him and uh, that was the end of this story actually. So I am taking you to the wall. Uh, this wall has, uh, it's, it's, it's really magnificent. You, you can see that black kind of artificial stone and it has a secret. Can you spot? It's, it was a task. So he ordered for the artists, uh, Italian artists who came here to create the secret um, figures of, uh, of toads, of snakes, crocodiles, rhinoceroses. And when you're looking at these uh, stones, you can spot, as you can see now, the snake, the toad, I will show you more. So that was the idea behind this place. So as I told you, I showed you civilization, the Sala Terena civilization, and now we are heading to primitive chaos. This is the primitive chaos, uh, this artificial wall represented untamed uh, nature. You can see these frag fragments of something uh, mounted on the walls of the Avery if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So the place where the birds live. Uh, and um, uh, it's, uh, everything is connected. You see the Sala Terena, you, you're very close to this untamed nature. Then you come to the geometrical how, um, gardens with, uh, with this beautiful bushes. I, I just focused on the snake. And the, the wall is very, it's huge, it is very long and high. Uh, so when you have filled yourself enough with the Hercules struggles in um, Sala Terena, you can just see the birds and find some creatures hidden here. For me, it's, this place is not, um, I don't know, it doesn't fill me with some kind of uh, positive thoughts, probably it's, um, it's it's a little bit depressive, uh, but that was the nature of Albrecht von Wallenstein. He uh, he also ordered to create, for example, the big statue of Neptune just in the middle of the uh, of the fountain. We will see it uh, because it is at the exit. Uh, uh, he, Everywhere he tried to show people that he is very important. Uh, why Neptune? Because Neptune was kind of the ruler of the ocean, of the sea. And um, 
Elbrecht von Wallenstein was also the admiral of the Baltic fleet. Uh, it's interesting because the Bohemia, the country, had this name. Bohemia it never had sea. And he became the naval commander. That was the great honor for him. And he ordered to, uh, to uh, build the Neptune statue just to show that he is so strong and he can tame uh, the, everything with his with his hand. Uh, so the creators of the statues were Italians and they were made from bronze. We will come closer to the statues but um, now we, we will we are enjoying uh, the this uh, wild nature and very strange wall. It's just very interesting, beautiful and unusual. I have never seen uh, this place, the place like that in, in Europe. I don't know where he took the idea, probably from Italy, uh, but that it was something magnificent and everything is like to ours, like I can create that and show that I am the, the main person here, something, something incredible. Uh, this palace reminds me about our Ukrainian um, last like not last president but the president before the war that was before the war flat president yanukovych uh, he also created the similar mansion uh, it's called mezhigiria in kyiv and he spent about two billion dollars for that mansion uh, he brought uh, from like these carpets from i don't know persia the uh, the chandeliers from Italy, the, uh, the most ecological wood was used for the building of that Honka house, it is called Honka house. And these people, I mean the you know, Ukrainian president and Elbrecht von Wallenstein, they had they had the plans to live here forever because they put so much effort and resources into having that in possession and what is interesting similarly Yanukovych lived in his palace just for two years and this guy also lived something about like up to ten years probably five six or seven uh, so then this fact proves me and proves to the world that um, money is a very important thing of course you need to have them to survive but when you have a lot of them and you when you put everything like all your love in money it doesn't bring you happiness at the end he was uh, trying to fill his ego with the people's money yes probably ego and um, that like everything is screaming like this is the kitsch place really kitsch place because you can see the lavishness and the opulence um, but i love these places what i love about these places that it's always all um, like they, they are left for the people because he didn't make any use of it but later the ordinary people like me can come and visit the place and even show it to you thank you for coming subscribe to my channel here on my live streams you can always see my smile and unusual places in Europe and in beautiful Ukraine where I am going to go to go but <laughs> I don't know when <laughs> because the situation is <laughs> difficult probably when Jack, when the Czech president will bring more shells I will come home <laughs> uh, and show you Kyiv as well so let me show you the wall from this perspective uh, and one more statue. By the way, the Swedes came here and they took away all the statues and now you can see the originals of the statues in some uh, museum in the palace in Sweden. So let's go and see the Neptune and the statues. Because um, the current uh, sculptures in Wallenstein Palace, they are copies and the originals, they were stolen by the Swedes who came here uh, in the, uh, in some, somewhere in the middle of the 17th century. Uh, I love the, the light. This is the low fountain 
it's in the form of the fish and I'm surrounded by the chestnuts blooming chestnuts it's amazing that these candles remind me about my <laughs> my cave I hope that you get to visit soon yes Carla you see the um, I don't know it's uh, of course this is the tour about the the palaces and the gardens but I I feel that you see what is in Israel is happening now that probably what happened in Ukraine was just the kick the start of something much much bigger it's like in the first world war nobody remembers that it began with the um, kind of this death of uh, this Prince Ferdinand so nobody remembers the reason when the war began but then there was World War the first and the same the same probably with Ukraine so when Russia attacked and had invaded Ukraine this might lead to something really incredible but still the world has got the time the democracies democratic world has got the time to stop everything to stop them disaster probably smart people will use this chance i don't know it's uh, i i probably becoming more philosophical uh we don't know about the history we can just know the what is like what happened in the last in the past we don't know what is what will happen in future and nobody knows that nobody knows that so i just hope that in ukraine uh i would say like the Ukrainian textbooks <laughs> in history will be written in Ukrainian language because if this summer or I don't know next summer Russians will have enough power to come and conquer Kyiv and the whole Ukraine and uh, my kids and grandkids will study Ukrainian history in Russian I think that the world also will feel these consequences let's hope for the best and um, we will go to another garden because i kind of slowed down here what do you think uh if you <laughs> do you love my political uh kind of um, uh, statements opinions when i'm showing you the gardens so this is the horse why the horse because he had the huge uh say like the um, stables here and uh he loved horses now in the stables uh, there are also the rooms for the senate and uh the stables were closer to the exit so we're going to see them the other part of the garden which is consist of the maze and these geometrical bushes that is a very uh, not very shady park because the bushes are quite low but they are uh, put in the form of the maze and sometimes the children are running here and there uh, to just to hide from their parents you see these beautiful statues bronze statues uh, and at that time they were uh, they were something incredible that even Swedes like liked them and stole them another interesting sites in Wallenstein garden uh, are the peacocks I don't see them now but sometimes they are walking in the maze probably will meet them so half of the building now belongs to the Czech Parliament and half to the uh, National Gallery it's very extensive very big complex and I like that it is so romantic like the early Baroque era Italian elements and uh, so many beautiful details uh, and it's just in the city center the place where the general uh, and the most important general of the 30 years war the military talent used to live and rule you can see this archer archer the statue of the archer and just behind this uh, building is the castle but it is situated on the hilltop so we will see it in a few moments
that is the small central fountain and from here you can see different you can see this is the central point of the maze from here you, you can see a lot of different paths like you can go here you can go here everywhere so that is the kind of intersection of the different paths for the maze we are going to the winter riding stables and here and i will pick up the central uh, path not not to get lost no. We have visited the most imposing uh, quarters, like the, the central part where the Duke, this Wallenstein, used to live. And now we are going to the stables with the central fountain. It's really beautiful, you know, especially when the, uh, this greenery is so fresh. I think that just a few... Uh, a few days ago there were no leaves. You remember I was making a tour a week ago uh, from the um, Karlstein castle and the whole hills, the mountains, they were without leaves. So just in a week, this appeared here. When the magnolias were blooming, there were no leaves here. So the garden were, uh, was kind of brown because they were just this, the bushes without leaves. But now it's the amazing atmosphere when it is fresh and um, decorated with this bronze statues and the fountains are now working thank you everyone for supporting me on paypal on buy me a coffee it is important because thanks to your kindness thanks to your generosity i am able to continue doing these tours if they are absolutely like free free and nothing at all it's very difficult for the guide to continue uh, this work so i hope you understand that and i'm very grateful for the people who choose to tip and to support a little bit uh, this project that uh, that was left after the hago collapsed as you Yes, very, really fast, because like um, last week, uh, the, this um, way, it's, uh, it's called like the Magnolia Path. You see the Magnolia's road. It was filled with the flowers, but now instead of the flowers, there are just the green leaves. And this is the uh, Neptune. You see he is beating some kind of dragon. And that was the most magnificent statue in the place i will show you myself second you remember just a year ago uh, there was the last tour of uh, hego it uh, closed on the 11th of um, april and this year uh, the guides uh, were remembering about this date i don't know it has kind of sad some sad flavor the the project couldn't survive but uh we could survive for one more year we continued making the tours we continued doing what you love we love you love and bring you amazing experiences so it's uh, it's because of you because of you because you are sponsoring that and making that happen uh i love this I would say rush probably like this uh, grass that is growing just from the um, main fountain and there are a lot of koi fish orange brown uh, the water is very fresh in the, in the autumn it is a little bit dark uh, but now it's the fresh water because they changed please let me know how do you think what is the future guys what do you think about the future of these tours well what will it happen in the year <laughs> will we continue doing them or not we have this i hope you know we always hope for the better like in ukraine we have this strange hope when the people see that we don't have the shells we don't have ammunition but we still hope to gain back our territories and here um we hope that we will be able to continue and not to lose you because many of uh, people who like were active on Hago, they they are not active on like on this youtube channels it's difficult to find them
So this is the idea of uh, uh, Albrecht von Wallenstein. Uh -huh, this is the coefficient that I will show you. So his idea was to build the palace to build the palace just in front of the eyes of the emperor. So emperor would come every morning, uh, drink his, I don't know what he was, what the emperors are drinking, beer, tea, and see the spreading magnificence of the, of the Wallenstein palace. And I just climbed on the pool, you see? That is the Prague castle. Over there you can see the spires of uh, St. Vitus Cathedral, so that is the Prague Castle, and that is the place where the Emperor would live. And these are the stables. You can see the kind of greenhouse and the stables. You, you want me to focus again on the koi fish? Great. We have a lot of guests today, the fish, the peacocks, and probably I'm not uh, promising you monkeys or anything like that, but sometimes people, like in the streets of Prague, you can meet strange people, they are carrying monkeys, <laughs> horses, definitely. So I'm going out, guys, because I have a lot of other things to show to you. Have to support the guys. Yes, Carla, this is the uh, this is the, the way how it's working. Just a little bit of help from everyone will make this project keep going and we will, we will be able to survive and probably even flourish. Who knows? Who knows what is going to happen next? I could never have imagined that I would live here in Prague, walking and showing you Wallenstein Palace. But you know, there is something good. I, my mentality, mentally, I was kind of con constrained in this uh, framework of Kyiv. So I was planning just to show Kyiv, to tell about Kyiv. Now I understand that I can show you Kyiv. Of course, I will go back, like make the tours, make the videos. And um, I can show you the other beautiful cities, not just even Prague, as I uh, had it this year to Vienna, to Paris, to Venice. Because when you start traveling and you allow yourself to, to go, it's just the world opens in front of you and something like the, this, uh, the tours, the, these tours become uh, possible. So for me, uh, this war changed, changed me. It's difficult, it's challenging. And um, uh, I don't know, it's like them. <laughs> you, you, you have always to conquer, uh, to conquer these um, difficult situations. And I even don't know what if like the war stops now, probably I will continue <laughs> to, to travel. And um, I don't know, it's really, uh, it's really strange, but you need this adrenaline that you need to survive. <laughs> Ukrainians are survivors now everywhere. Love the tour of Olga with Kyiv. She fought her people in Kyiv. Thank you. Thank you for writing me about about Ukraine as well. So we are going to visit some cool place, uh, and I'm not restricted with the time. So uh, I will like in my face. These are the modern trams, but in Prague you can also see sometimes the old trams as well. I will stand here. That is the museum of Slivovice. Slivovice, that is the drink, alcoholic drink, uh, like, the, like the plum vodka probably. And uh, there's the museum of beer, the museum of Slivovice. You can taste and like say to yourself i can drink i'm in museum i'm doing something <laughs> learning the history uh, that is the souvenir shops and we will pass the brewery it's um is the brewery which is visited by tourists and you will see the big courtyard. I just want to show you that this beer culture is very popular in uh, um, in Prague and usually this is how it looks like. So there are a lot of 
tables. I don't know why they are not like a lot of empty places. Yesterday it was all full. Uh, and uh, there are also these barrels standing here. And you can try the different types of beer. When you will hear that the Brock is cheaper than water, it can be in some places, but in city center it is sometimes even uh, even more like it's expensive even for the Germans who come here and they say like why they have um, beer for three euros uh, so here in the city center beer can be very expensive and it's not the case that it's cheaper than the water um, usually you can you don't have the variety of choices just the Pilsner, which is the white beer and like white or how to say and dark beer but when you go to another breweries which are situated not in the city center but somewhere like in the monasteries there you will find another choice like i like sour beers for example uh, and my last discovery this week was the beer with herbs <laughs> um, so uh, I just fell in love with it. It's quite expensive. I will tell you the bottle is um, 200 crowns. Yes, this is about 10, 10 dollars per bottle. Uh, but it is amazing, like the beer with herbs. It's sour and it has this flavor of herbs. It's kind of medicine. And we have arrived to Vajane Garden. Now the peacocks are waving their tail. So let's go and hunt peacocks. Oh, here they are. Them lilacs are blooming incredibly. So this is the mate, like mating season time for the peacocks. They are looking for their, uh, for their ladies. And it means that they are showing their tails. They want to impress the ladies. So picture like you are strolling into the cobblestone streets. The wind is blowing into your face. The sun is kissing your, I don't know, cheeks. And you can see the blossoming of the flowers everywhere. Magnolias, cherry blossoms, you name it. And all of a sudden you chase that amazing peacocks so he is busy eating and there is no lady to show his beautiful tail and these beautiful gardens they are everywhere they are the part of the city so we are in an old monastic garden so that was the monastery uh, actually this was the the ladies lived here the nuns they had the beehives and they even survived uh, there are frescoes on them uh, uh, here on the buildings and you're like stepping into the fairy tale because all of a sudden you can see this fancy peacocks okay he is not showing us the tail so probably we'll, we will find more of them guys please let me know what do you think i promised to you to show you the blossoming part and here is a lot of apple trees in bloom uh, so they are blooming in white let's go and see the garden itself the garden is just magnificent there are a lot of benches but people love to come and sit down on them uh, on the ground today we had another warning please let me know this I for, again i forgot the word for this insect that can cause lyme disease uh, so they this is the peak uh, season and a lot of uh, a lot of people were like suffered from that bites of those uh, ugly insects and you know this uh, Lyme disease it's just uh, it stays with the person forever that is why now everywhere uh, there are the signs don't sit on the ground and it's a problem for Czech Republic really don't sit here on the ground because uh, this peacock is trying yes he's trying and he's busy I will try to find another one who is more active but you know this is evening they are birds they are going to sleep now so um, 
uh, ticks, ticks, probably tick square. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for writing this to me. What is interesting about this bush? I have never seen that in my life. You can see that it is pink. It is pink, but it started blooming as scarlet red and it changed color every day. I made videos here at the beginning of the week and these two trees, this one and this one, they were just absolutely Yes, Carla, the dogs. The dogs have this problem as well on the ears, on the belly, uh, and the tree like changes its color from the scarlet red into the white. I don't know what magic happens, but you see this is the uh, bright, um, bright red, and then the pink, and then the white. It's the magical tree, like something, something truly unusual because it's not just from pink to white but but from very dark dark red into the absolutely white colors okay this is the garden itself and that is the kind of main main path it will lead us to the upper area which is full of this charming peacocks but you see people don't Listen. Some people don't listen to the uh, to the city authorities, and they still prefer to sit on the uh, on the grass because it's more <laughs> like you feel yourself grounded. You feel yourself connected with the nature. Uh, a lot of different blossoms. This garden is amazing because up to actually May, it has different types of trees and it starts with magnolias and then you have another pink and white whenever you come you will see the different colors but it's um, it's happening very quickly I have a crab apple tree that does that crab apple tree it's interesting probably 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 it's it's it you see a few, not a few, yesterday it was blooming. That reminds me about our life, like you find yourself like you are a young person full of, um, I don't know, beautiful hair and all of a sudden this, everything falls down like and the spring is becoming summer and then autumn. Uh, very quickly this blossoming ends. And uh, again, my thought about the war in Ukraine, everything is blossoming also right now. And the, the fact that there is war, it doesn't stop the nature. The nature still continues to, to be and uh, to give this emotions to the people like the life the beauty so a lot of soldiers who uh, lost their i don't know limbs and who are dying they are depicting the um, the beautiful ukrainian spring uh the sun and writing in their sms messages that it's hard to believe that in among all this beauty and like flourishing nature the death happens so uh, that that I don't know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so let me show you the peacocks. I wanted to tell you their place on the earth when when the spring also comes, but it it is not really the spring because I think that people still have the the winter in their hearts. Oh my gosh. This is like, this is the pictures that you can bring from Prague. Just come here and sit down on the bench. You don't have, you don't need monkeys. You will have the beautiful peacocks sitting just here in front of you. You don't even need your seeds or, I don't know, sun, sunflower seeds for free. They will pose for you. You can touch them, you can hug them. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the big tail. <gasps> I remember 
lilacs yes i will by the way in a few days i will create not a few days i just try to make it today but i'm preparing the tour of kiev lil lilacs and you will see it as like in the recorded form but i think it's quite um it's not so uh engaging i don't know when I started making the video today about Kyiv and the Lilac Garden, I found out that I have about an hour of recorded um, videos. How do you think? How can I make it interesting for you? It's not interesting just to uh, watch the lilac bushes for even 20 minutes. I will uh, add, of course, the music. Uh, but I'm not sure like is it interesting for you to watch them to watch the video of the lilac garden because I don't know what to tell like I will tell them something like hello and like yes this is this will be lilac forest but I am not sure about the commentary how do you think if I put just the music you will see lilac forest and the music so this is the heaven of the peacocks I am wait, waiting for your answers. What is the best way to create this lilac forest tour? With the commentary or without my commentary? Please let me know how do you think. This is the girl, this is the lady. They are not showing you the games. Now, that's kind of when they are chasing each other. Oh, and look when they are sitting. One, two, three, four, five six seven seven peacocks just sitting here on the branches this is the hidden gem this is the secret garden uh, and uh, you will discover if you come here and discover it you will feel like you are in paradise look here they are sitting on the branches ha ah, traveler i i i thought that your first tour was about the, um, this uh, Mezhigiria in Yanukovych residence. Uh, but you joined me even later. So you are uh, offering me to make the poems. Poems and uh, music. Mm -hmm. Often do tours just with lovely music. Okay. Music with a little commentary. Okay. So you see, they are kind of tamed. You can just come and offer something. They will be very happy. The paradise is in the heart of the city. You can come here and experience Prague like never before. They are especially quiet in the evening. Probably in the daytime, they are even more active because they are the more nervous, running. Um, but uh, when you come here in the evening, they are very calm and getting ready to sleep. I think that visiting Prague is the best in April and in May. You will make unforgettable memories uh, among all these blossoms and peacocks. And um, it's, uh, it's something very like this, this will be the tour or the adventure where you will combine the love of architecture and then and the nature because this blossoming season make will make your journey special so today we were discovering today we were discovering the springtime magic of prague and i have shown you three hidden gardens we started with them gardens below the Prague castle then we came to uh, Valenstein garden and we're finishing at Vajane garden please let me know are you interested in seeing being man this is where I can take you oh he's jumping so I'm speaking probably loudly to him and <laughs> yes they are calm not always calm you know sometimes they are chasing each other or the ladies uh, like the lady peacocks and I couldn't guarantee that they are calm and sometimes they are quite persistent so if they are hungry they can come and ask <laughs> for their seeds but you can easily come and just make the pictures of their tail and things like this like they are here 
We can make a tour about the peacock, you know, not, not, you don't have anything. I don't have to add anything. Papa, he just ran away. So, as I um, um, mentioned before, this is the old monastery, the monastery of the 13th century. And sometimes on the buildings you can find the, uh, the frescoes. So, you can see on the buildings there are the old frescoes, which is also very beautiful. Okay, let's go to the Ping Man to say my goodbyes to you. Oh, yes! We have this guy for you. So he opened, he opened his tail because here is the lady and he wants to impress her. All of a sudden we found the working peacock. <laughs> uh, when I'm surrounded by them, can you count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven birds and a lot of pigeons. You see, he has got just three ladies, so I'm sure that probably today he will be rewarded. Let me know what do you think. Are they interested? Like these two are standing and thinking. I don't know what they are thinking about. And these three ladies are just standing in this corner. And this one is eating the corn seeds and I see that this is kind of a professional food for the the proper food for the birds not just bread <laughs> I see that he's happy oh and this one began to move to his uh, lady you see he is moving very slowly on his tiny legs So this is the amazing garden, just hidden, tucked away, uh, and you feel like you are in in the fairy tale. What else? Ah, now he, you see he's he's moving his kind of back uh, back part of his body. Uh, it's the second part of the dance. I have never seen that. Have you seen that he is like moving and uh, shaking, shaking his feathers? Uh, there is the sound of them. I don't know, rattle, like rattling. I'm afraid there are so many peacocks around them, so around me, so they can, <laughs> they can jump on me, and <laughs> I don't have seeds. It's incredible. It's just incredible. Let's go, and from this top point of the garden. I will show you how it looks like in the blossoming season. He's like a bachelor, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Picking up. No, this is the, the, really the best part of the tour. I really, I can make the tour just chasing the peacocks. So beautiful and so unique. Oh no, they... And this one also opened his tail. But there are no ladies in front of him. He's just alone. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Those ladies ain't, uh, aren't taking any notice of him yet. Maybe have more luck later. <laughs> yes, a lot of people. This one is very beautiful. You see, uh, he has, his feathers are much more beautiful. Uh, Oh, I'm afraid of him. He's gorgeous. This one is really amazing. I think he's younger. I don't know, like, because the, the, the first peacock um, didn't have such rich feathers. He has, like, you see, a lot of spots everywhere. And his feathers are all not, not kind of hollow. They are full. So this is the most beautiful peacock that I have ever, ever seen. Have, <laughs> it's me and a peacock. We were screaming actually together into the mic. Sorry. 
Okay. Incredible. Just incredible. So he has shown everything he has. Just everything and even more. Yes, exactly. This is the male peacock. We are now looking at the beautiful male peacock. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Yes, no ladies. No ladies, but he's the, the most beautiful one. All ladies are standing on the other corner, you see. All ladies are standing over there. <laughs> They are just wasting their time because that guy was so handsome. <laughs> well, I see now so many cute comments in the chat and the tour is becoming really uh, fun, uh, closer to the end. So uh, it's very enjoyable part, you know, just to walk in the gardens and to share with you all these beauties and also uh, it's a part of the of our life this the peacocks and the spring and everything that is happening around us oh there are even different names of the peacocks yes probably in india this is quite an unusual uh, like a uh, bird, like a hen <laughs> uh, for Ukraine, but uh, this is something very exotic for Europe. And the fact that these peacocks still live here, even during like winter season, it's amazing. And we are wandering back through the streets of these lined cherry blossoms. And I am feeling you, sending you a lot of love a lot of flowers and i'm sending you this breeze because the air is full of amazing fragrance that's being an adventure today i love this uh tours when i actually repeat them but they are not usual when i'm taking you to to the same places d during the different seasons they look differently so that is incredible i'm heading to ping man guys don't go away if you have time please stay and enjoy some fancy um i would say tourist trap or jam you will name me this is jasmine these are the big flowers of i think jasmine he must be new to mating <laughs> <laughs> so we are going out and that is the magnolia garden actually you don't see the leaves uh, the petals of magnolias because they are so quick like in a few just in a few like days and they are gone it's interesting that i came here make a full video of this blossoming magnolias and i decided okay i will just create some music and we'll make a video for youtube and tomorrow i will come for like and to make pictures for myself like with this with magnolias i came in three days and all magnolias like are gone so i don't know why it's so quickly probably it's hot probably the spring is hotter than the usual one but uh, it's just happened very rapidly. Um, I mean, the magnolias blossom. Been a while since seeing your videos, Olga, over stunning. Oh, thank you, Tracy. I will try to fill my channel with more of them. You know, it's quite uh, challenging to create the videos. Well, I was asking you the question about the uh, the music and the lilac garden because I noticed that sometimes when you just put the video and some music, people are not interested in that. Uh, or you have to make it short like let's say up to five minutes then it's okay and people will watch bushes shrubs and flowers for five minutes but to watch lilac forest <laughs> for 20 minutes uh, through the video it's not interesting of course you can walk in the lilac forest for two hours and it is amazing and you wouldn't want to leave 
uh, the place because the fragrance, this amazing feelings and uh, sensors and uh, the beauty, when you are experiencing it in person, it's uh, like you can't put it into words because it is something special. When you're watching the videos of flowers on YouTube, it's something like, okay, okay, flowers, <laughs> flowers, beautiful, <laughs> next video. Um, so, uh, so I'm just making my way in this YouTube life and uh, this will take, of course, some um, some mistakes, probably the experience to know what the people really love. Uh, I will show you the street, street of Prague, but we will not go down because you see they there is the line of people and actually it's a touristic trap, but a very interesting one. You have to press the button and you go down uh, and just one person can fit into the space there is the traffic light now it shows green then it will change the color it will become red and people go one by one like usually uh, like some people go and then they will go up it, but definitely you cannot like go together if someone is going up it means that you will not go down so the people usually have to wait and you see this is the button and there is no it's not working but on the um, like below down below the button is working so they the people who are standing uh, in the restaurant because this is the restaurant they are actually pressing the button let's go to see the ping man franz kafka and ping uh, my dear travelers, thank you so much for being with me today. There is the button for, uh, there was the wonderful option for you to make these tours happen. Uh, buy me a coffee and PayPal. Uh, I'm very grateful to those of you who are supporting me, Ukraine, and this fancy project that Hego started and we continue when we are going live showing you what is happening in different corners of the planet that takes a lot of effort and um, to make it live longer you may leave it you may you may make it <laughs> you make this you make this happen you make this possible and thank you for those who are tipping and supporting the guides it's becoming more and more challenging to continue doing these tours but I hope that we will be able to continue doing that uh, this is amazing creation of David Cherny it has the uh, meaning behind it so these men are peeing on the map of Czech Republic. He um, uh, didn't love the fact that uh, Czechoslovakia was split into Czech Republic and Slovakia. And he created a basin in the shape of the map of Czech Republic, of what is left for the Czechs. And he... Uh, they, he put he, here this man and they are peeing and even moving. Uh, these organs, YouTube blocks these words probably. <laughs> I will not <laughs> name them. <laughs> uh, so he, they are moving these organs, uh, and back then they were writing SMS. So sometimes uh, uh, you you would uh, like many years, not many years ago, like a few years ago, when the statue was just placed here, there was the SMS number. You could uh, write your word, and they would write the word, the, your word, like like your name, for example with this water and with moving now they are just walking up and down up and down it's so beautiful because when i came to prague they were not working something was broken we are very lucky that they fixed and they are being man <laughs> man it's <laughs> uh, uh, so it's absolutely amazing place and uh, 
uh, I love these fancy things when the, everybody's laughing, like the teenagers are laughing, children are laughing, uh, these uh, ladies and gentlemen are laughing, so everybody's happy to see that, uh, to see that fancy design of uh, map of Czech Republic. Um, thank you 1000 times for the tips and for those who are making this decision to support this project. So let's look at their faces. Why I'm showing you just this part? <laughs> like <laughs> what you will think about me. Let's look at the faces. You see this um, kind of special shape, uh, the sliced shape. This is the feature of David Cherny. He created the uh, spinning Kafka's head and it also has these layers, the layered structure. And this being man, they also have this layered structure but um they used to move their hips now they make them steady like you see the, the hips oh a little bit moving not very much so this was our wonderful adventure i'm here to answer your questions please let me know what do you think about our incredible tour today i will not even delete it from uh from youtube because it started in the gardens below the Prague castle which we surprisingly visited for free uh, i started the tour early and those six people who joined me uh, before the tour were rewarded with this um, tour in the gardens below the Prague castle if you missed the beginning of the tour i will now disconnect i will wrap up the show and please go to the beginning you will see the amazing amazing gardens below the Prague castle beer claire you want me to go to the beer to pub ah uh, you you're probably writing about them that they have drunk a lot of beer and now they're peeing uh, what is made of uh, it looks like copper because it's becoming green um, i think probably not bronze bronze this will be too expensive so it's either bronze or copper probably bronze even Let's come closer and find out. How do you think? What they're made from? Thank you, everyone. Next time, I will tell you about Prague legends. I love this topic. This is the city of legends. Uh, the city that has mm, the special national holiday of the uh, of the legends because in November when around the time when uh, you have holy, um, Halloween people here don't love Halloween they have their special Dushichki holiday and all the Prague legends people are wearing these costumes they are going outside they go from house to house tell these legends and it's amazing piece of Czech culture uh, there are three books written about Prague legends and I'm going to tell you next week so next week we are diving into them uh into the Prague legends if you missed the beginning of the show because i began the uh, the tour earlier because of this mic which is still working please go and see the Prague, uh, uh gardens below the Prague castle i love you all thank you 1000 times for supporting me and uh, make sure to watch my videos and i will I will post a new video today about Lila Garden in Kyiv. And if you liked this tour, please go and see it with um, music, without music. But your likes and comments below my videos are very important. Thank you so much, Ping Man, waving goodbye to you. Goodbye. See you next week on Prague Legends. Goodbye. Thank you for tipping. Goodbye. Yes, Polly, there is PayPal um, a link just mentioned uh, close to buy me a coffee. And there is a dot if you want to tip me in the, in the mail marvelous.kiv at gmail.com. So there is the dot between the words. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Не посунете, что
Art. This is art. This is art. Goodbye. Nothing wrong. This is art. Goodbye. Mira, mira que fue la puntita. Ay, que se mueve, mira, escucha que se mueve la pista y todo el mundo. ¿Es la hall?